Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to be continuing this full tang feather Damascus integral skinning knife that we started in the last video. We got our bolsters forwards welded, and now it's time to start doing all the cleanup, profiling, grinding, and finish this thing out. We've got some ancient bog cypress, 2000 year old, that we're going to be using on this. I've already prepared it with some G10, so let's get to it. All right, so if you haven't seen the previous video, I'd highly recommend going back and checking it out uh, and see how we forge welded these bolsters. These are a 240 layer W's, crushed W's, that's forged vertically to create a pattern here because the pattern is always on the end of the bar. And because I had this stock, this bar stock from a two or three videos back of Feather Damascus, I didn't have enough room to create a integral the normal way. This is just fine though. And, um, you know, as I've mentioned in the last video, I learned this from Salem Straub, his technique, and um, he gave me some pointers on how to, you know, be successful with it. So check that video out, it's very important. What I'm going to do now is come in here and cut the scallop, blend this blade with the bolster, and I will also square up the back end. I'll be cutting this, milling it out, we got to do a little tapering here, a little distal taper there, it's a lot of work, and uh, get ready to heat treat and get the handle material on there. All right, there's several ways to do this, to cut this and blend this into your integral. There's jigs for it. Um, I, I know there's a couple companies that make one, one for sure, but um, this is how I do it. You don't have to have a jig, um, but it does take some control, but it will with a jig as well. But what I'm gonna do is come in here, I'm gonna use a half inch wheel, and I'm gonna come in here and cut this scallop to blend it in with the blade. I will also taper it a little bit, and I've got a reference mark here on this tang to see where any offset may be from when I forge weld these bolsters because a lot of times you'll move your tang. Like I mentioned in the last video, you'll move your blade and tang will be offset a little bit. This one is very, very slight, so I'm not too concerned about it, but we will get it straight and square and that's how I'm going to do it. So that's what I'm going to do coming here with a rough wore out belt to begin with and then I'll move on to a fresh belt after I remove some of this scale. All right, so now what I'm going to do, since I've got it blended in now, so that they're seamless in here, there's no seam where these bolsters were forge welded. The whole time I'm watching to make sure I'm square on my shoulders, and I'll be truing them up as I go because I'm going to be working this all the way up to about 600 grit here. Because after I heat treat, I want to make it pretty easy to sand all this. And once I get that point, I will clean the scale off of this handle area I'll clean it up probably with my disc sander. Then we'll set up to square these shoulders up on the mill. And like I said, you can do this with a grinder, but it is very tough. You can also come in here and bevel the back sides. You just have to match it with your handles or scallop them, whatever you want to call it. I'm also correcting a little offset I had in the spine as I go. I've got a, a mark there, reference mark, so I can see it and I will be making sure that's all good and straightened and it looks pretty good right now. So once I get that done, we'll move on to the next step, but I won't show all the progression. 
All I'm gonna do is just keep cleaning this up to 600, then we'll move on to this. All right, so we got them cut and they come out looking pretty good, but it wasn't without mishap. I broke one of my end mills. I didn't get it on camera. I didn't have it running. I was cutting one side and I knew better than to use an end mill this big and a two flute end mill. And uh, it kind of caught the corner shattered I can't even find one of the pieces but so I went in with a quarter and finished it up but uh, that's you know 30 bucks gone uh, it's actually a end mill that I use for a specific task when I'm making folders but I had to get another one so now I went ahead and blended you know where I cut down with the end mill and I blended it out and I've got my holes marked to, uh, for my pinholes. So I can go ahead and drill them. Then I'm gonna profile these bolsters to pretty much final shape and we'll heat treat it. But I wanna get them pretty close because after heat treat, I'm gonna clean up everything and we're gonna etch this after I uh, profile the handles. I'll put temporary pins in and profile those. So let's get the holes drilled. I'm just gonna knock in some 330 seconds and a thong hole and we're gonna get it in the oven. All right, we got all the heat treating and tempering done. I tempered it two hours twice at 400 degrees. Then I went ahead and cleaned up everything. Got all that scale and what I call that quench etch where your pattern pops out everywhere and it does look good. The bolsters really pop out against the feather. But if you don't get all that off, when you go to do your etch, it's gonna give you problems because it's, it's scale down in, you know, below the top side of your pattern. And so you got to get all that out of there. So I went ahead, cleaned up everything pretty close to final finish 
soften all of the edges right here in the chawl up here on the spine. I went ahead and tapered the tang over on my disc sander. So, you know, cleaned up these shoulders in here where I got to glue up. Everything is pretty close to the final finish, but now it's time to grind the main bevels. Once I get that done, I'll hand sand it, put our handles on temporarily, go ahead and shape them all, then we'll mount them um, after I do the etch. So right now, I'm gonna go get her ground. She looks pretty good, pretty pleased with everything. So let's hope it goes good the rest of the way.
All right, so I went ahead and flattened the scales down some. I also adjusted these lines before I did that to make up for the taper. But I had to get the original line, center line, fine center first, and then I adjusted based on center of the tang width of these scales. Now they will not be sculpted with a ball in the middle, like a Coke bottle handle. Customer does not want that. He wants a straight, more of an oval, kind of like when you put a set of stag scales on a knife. Whatever you got there is straight, and that's what he wants. He doesn't want that, that ball in your hand, just a nice oval finish. So I'm going to go ahead now and profile them to the tang, and then I'm going to start rounding them out. I'm doing it with temporary pins. You know, they're just stuck in there. That way I can take them off, etch the blade, install the handles, and polish everything. Should be good to go. So we're going to go ahead and take a belt here and profile them. Well, I think we got her finished. Went ahead and glued it up. I didn't think he wanted to see that. But so after I etched my logo, etched the blade and glued her up. And I've got some shots here for you here at the end. She come out pretty good. I really like it. Like I said, I'll have some shots here for you in just a minute. Real nice. That uh, bog cypress really looks sweet. So if you got any questions, just leave them down below. Got any comments? I really appreciate that. I thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I want to thank my patrons, and we're going to see you on the next one.